Matthew chapter 25, I'm going to get you to stay, remain seated because I'm going to re read a whole pile of verses tonight, this morning. This morning's message is entitled, Doing Your Best for the Lord. Doing the best for the Lord. Hear ye the Master's call, give him thy leftovers. Not what Jesus says, is give him the best. And uh, what a blessing it is to be able to give God your best. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to start at verse 14. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, keep turning. Uh, Mom, uh, we need a, somebody. Can you let Dom bore your Bible? And Dom, we're going to get you a Bible. We're gonna, oh, Brother Rob's going to get him, let him bore his Bible. Um, Matthew 25, verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is, is as a man traveling into a far country who is called... Uh, who called his own servants and delivered uh, them unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to the other two, and to another one. And to every man according to his several ability, he straightway took his journey. And sorry, they, they that uh, had received the five talents uh, uh, went and traded them with the same and made them another five, made them another five talents. And likewise, he that had received two talents, he also gained another two. Now, I want you, uh, uh, I want you to notice verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged, and uh, digged in the earth, and hid his lord's money. After a long time, the lord of those servants cometh, and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five, and saying, Lord, uh, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. For thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And he also that, uh, that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. And behold, I gain two other talents besides them. And the and the Lord, sorry, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he that which had received uh, the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee uh, that thou, were, thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. I and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there, uh, there hast, uh, sorry, there thou hast, that is thine. The Lord said, didn't say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And the Lord said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reaped where I had sown not and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore have put my money to an exchangers, and then at my coming thou shalt receive mine own usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him which hath ten talents. For every one that shall, uh, sorry, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from him hath uh, him that hath not, not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast the, uh, ye the unprofitable servant unto outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and nothing, gnashing of teeth. I have a red letter edition Bible, and my those words are in red. And a red letter, when they're in red, that means Jesus himself spoke it. And Jesus wants us to do our best. Jesus wants us to serve him. Um, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, God wants you to to serve him. It doesn't matter how much talents you had. Again, one got five, one got two, and one got one. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you have. God wants you to serve him. 
God, uh, again, I have had so many people say, what do you mean? I am in such financial turmoil, I cannot tithe. That's dumb. If you're in financial turmoil, what should you do? Keep tithing. Why? Because God will get you out of it. Amen? He, do, do you think God is a poor God? God is, God is a rich God. Amen? Amen? See, Jesus uses parables when he was teaching lessons out of life. And this lesson we can learn is, is a lesson that we ought to all have. Doesn't matter again how young you are. It doesn't matter if you're a church kid or not a church kid. It doesn't matter if this is your first time or your hundredth time coming to church. God wants you to do your best for Him. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you have a piece of gum, Mom? Do you have gum? Uh, I, 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 do you have gum, Rob? Yeah. All right. Can I, can I, can I steal a piece from you? Ooh, they're testaments. Cool. He's got, I'm getting spiritual. Their testament. This is a. I'm glad that God, uh, that Rob gave me a, a, a piece of gum. Now, Sarah, would you like that piece of gum? Miss, my, my my wife would take it. How about this? It's only chewed once. How about the? Rob, would you like it back? <laughs> Amen. Hold on. I don't believe in chewing gum in church. I'll give you a piece of U.S. spearmint gum. How about a, a bottle of water? It's opened. Who's thirsty? I've, I've drank some. Here. Would you like it now? Hold on. Backwash. Would you like it now? then why do we give God our leftovers? Why don't we give God our second best? Why don't we serve God? You say, well, I'm only a kid. You can still serve God. I don't have much. You can still serve God. I, I don't know what to do. Do something. Don't just sit in the pew and do nothing. You know, yesterday we went out and it was great to see, uh, you know, Rob. Now, I have a new nickname for you, Giraffe. He's like, one step is like 15 of mine. It's like, you know, and he's gone and we're out, we're out going out and, and, and putting church uh, flyers indoors and we're just, we're, we're having a good time and we're, we're doing something for God. Do something. You got saved. By the way, you're not saved by good works, you're saved to do good works. Well, I don't know much. Okay, I want you all to repeat this phrase after me. Why don't you come to church with me? Let's say it. Ready? Why don't you come to church with me? That don't take much talent. Let's say it again. Ready? Why don't you come to church with me? That's so hard. Don't know if I can do it, Rob. The Bible says nothing will last forever. See, God wants us to do something for Him. Things get old. Cars get old. Houses deteriorate. You buy a car, and if you buy it for fifteen thousand dollars, you will you drive it off the lot. And you drive it off the lot, and it, it, it's, it's, it loses $2,000. You drive it to next door to Tim Hortons, it loses two grand. The, our clothing gets old and we're afraid. But I'm here to tell you the commands of God never get too old. Again, our text, again, the, the, the God gave three people uh, three different talents. See, he won't give you more than you can handle. He gave one five talents and he gained them what? Five more. Why? Because he was a faithful servant. Another one he gave two talents and he gained them two more. Because, why? Because he, the same phrase, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. But the third one, he said, he, he hid it. He was a chicken. Well, man, I... Yeah. 
Don't want to do anything for God. And he hid it. God was mad. He called him wicked and slothful. And I think dare to say there's a lot of Christians sometimes are wicked and slothful because we don't do our best for the Lord. We give God the chew, leftover chewed up gum. We don't give God, we give God the leftover time of our day. We got to give God the best of our day. We do not need to change the Bible. We need the Bible to change us. Amen. There are so many perversions out there that change, change it for, for their own liking. But we ought to get back to what the Bible says. I like this morning, I was talking to Dom outside. I said, Dom, the Bible says in Acts 2.41, they that gladly received his word were baptized. I said, Dom, did you gladly receive his word? Are you saved? Uh-huh. What do you need to do next? Get baptized. When do you want to get baptized? Whenever. I said, how about after church today? Okay. Dom don't have a change of clothes. I do suggest you take off your watch and your belt. But because you're gonna get wet, but 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 we're gonna get them dunked, amen. And anybody else that needs dunking, we'll dunk you. The Bible says that we uh, earthly things are really not that important. See, in Matthew chapter six, verse or sorry, shouldn't be that important. Should, or should I correct myself? Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and dust, du rust doth corrupt, where thieves may break in and steal. Uh, my dear friends, you could go home and everything in your home could be gone. You could go home and your house could be on fire and is gone. What treasures are you laying up? See, when we do something for the Lord, that gives us some heavenly treasures. You know, uh, uh, I prayed for you, young man, for a lot of years. I'm the one that led you to the Lord just up the hill there. And I prayed, dear Lord, help, help him to come and help him to get grounded and help him to, to seek and to, to, to stay in the, in the path of the truth and right. And yesterday, man, that, that man, I, man I, I, I had a Baptist fit. I started shouting. I did. Well, that's just childish. Good, and I'm a child. The Bible says we're supposed to have childlike faith. I got happy. I got happy when I heard Dom come to church on Thursday night. Man, I got happy. You say it's only church Thursday night. Uh, I still got happy. Why? My, my material possessions don't, I don't care about. It's my heavenly possessions that I carry about, care about. The Bible is the, per, is, the per, is the perfect guideline for us to live. See, the, the Declaration of Independence says that all men are created equal. I'm here to tell you, that is not true. We're not all equal. We're unique. We're not all equal. If we were all equal, we'd all have the same job, the same hairstyle, the same uh, cookie cutter house. We're all unique. Now, all races and all creeds are created equal. Please hear me out. Y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> God made people unique. See, if Rob is a business owner, Sarah is a manager, we got some unemployed people here, you're not equal. You're unique. You're different. But that un the unemployed people, I have a little more uniqueness than somebody maybe than Rob does. Or Sarah. Or myself. We all fit like, no, we're not all, we're the body of Christ. You understand what I'm saying here? We're the body of Christ. We all can't be the thumb. You know, Rob may be the thumb or the nose. 
He might be the thumb. And, 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 and Jim might be the, the right bicep. And, 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 and the kneecap might be Sarah. And the big toe might be Festus. And, 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 the, and the, the Achilles tendon might be, we're all, we're all unique. We have a job to do. How many people have ever woke up when your leg fell asleep? What happens? Boom! Fall flat on your face. And you're like, you know, you're like you're trying to beat it and wake it up. That's a part of the body of Christ. Now, I don't believe all Christians are the body of Christ. I, I don't believe that. I believe that local church is the body of Christ. And when one of us is asleep at the switch, the whole body aches. See, God gave us some talents, some five, some two, some one, but God gave us all something. And we ought to do our best for the Lord. You say, I'm only a kid. Doesn't matter. I want to give you a lesson that if you apply in your life this morning and you apply it every day in your life, you'll go, wow. And you will hear when you see Jesus Christ, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but I want to hear that, not just, ah, you're saved, come on in. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful. How many people want to hear that? Amen? He, take heed to this. Number one, our best is good enough no matter how little it is. No matter how little we think it is. Well, I just, my job, all I do is I just hand, out the, hand the offering plate across. That's all I do. You do your best. If that's, if that's all you got, use it for the Lord. Well, my, my job is, uh, I, God, God hasn't given me a, a, a direction in this church, but I, I'm, I'm tithing and that's, that's all I've got. Then you best be a tither. And you best do it at, at the best you can. And again, the excuse of, well, I'm in financial trouble, I can't tithe, is ignorant. I'm trying to refine my speech. It's, it's, it's spiritual suicide. God can use your 90% more than 100%. And by the way, it's all God's. Again, well done, thou faithful and servant. Uh, in our text, one had five, one had two. They're not equal gifts. But God, and by the way, that's how God works. God does not give everybody the equal gifts. See, I'm not Jack Hiles, Lee Robertson, or Dan Parton. I'm me. I'm not Ro Roberto Vitulano. Amen. <laughs> I'm me. I'm not uh, uh, P.K. Menon, right? I'm not. Now, how do you pronounce your first name? How do you pronounce your first name properly? Is it Pedmar? I'm not PK. I'm me. I'm not Sarah. Bless God. I'm me. I'm not Festus. I'm me. We are, and you're, by the way, you're not anybody else but you. See, God gave you a talent. Rob, can you speak Italian? Other than linguine and, and pizza, and, but you can speak. I can. Um, what's your national language, PK? In Hindi? I can't speak it. But so if we have a Hindi person or an Italian person or somebody from Ghana, uh, tree language, right? Is your, your husband speak? Uh, I can't speak it. Well, bless God, you can. Filipino. Some things I can say. <laughs> Mahalakita um, means I love you. Uh, um, a Kaudin means you too. Um, other ones I'm not going to say. But, uh, but, but, but I, I know my wife can. See, we have different talents. So if somebody comes in our church with your language, guess what? 
Rob, this person only speaks Italian. I don't. Step in. Amen? Folks, listen to me. God gave us different. We're unique. The Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're unique. The Bible says you're a peculiar. Should, we should be a peculiar person. We're unique. I've never had these kind of ministries these men's had, these men's have, but I, and God doesn't expect me to. God expects from me my best, and he expects you from you, from you, from you, your best. Hear ye the master's call. Give him thy best. For be it great or small, that is his test. Do then the best you can, not for reward, not for the praise of men, but for the Lord. Every work for Jesus will be blessed. But he asks from everyone his best. Our talents may be few, these may be small, but unto him is due our best, our all. You don't leave it all on the table. Remember whatsoever thy hand, Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, slack off and don't do it. It's not what it says. Do with all thy might. Give it all to God. You know, and leave it all on the table. Hockey players and baseball players, when, they, when they're playing for the, the trophy, they are uh, football players, they play for the trophy, they leave it all on the field. You know, football, Newt Rockney, leave it all on the field. When you're dead, you ought to say, I've done my best. When you go to bed at night, you ought to say, I've done my best today. Lord, I hope I was pleasing to you today. How many people have ever thought that? Be honest. Not many. Well, God, I came to church once. That's enough. You know, going to church is not for God. It's for you. You, you made a statement. Uh, what did you say about church last week, uh, yesterday? That it's, it's, uh, it's a place to get fueled up. Fed. Fed and fueled up for, for the fight. That's it. Equipped. You know, uh, when I was in the army, we went to battle. You know, they gave us a gun. They gave us ammunition. They gave us grenades. They gave us rocket launchers. They gave us whatever we had. We didn't go with a squirt gun. Man, we had it all. We made sure we, we, we were ready for the battle. You know, if you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. Don't slack off. At the end of the day, you should say, hey, hey Lord, I've given you my best. I hope. I hope it was enough. See, God's attitude when he gives us when, when he sees that, is he gives us a reward. And it's not, again, not for the praise of men, but for the Lord. You know, we're growing. Our church is growing, and, and, and bless God it is, but I don't want to run two, three, four, five hundred because people say, well, look what Pastor Payne's doing at Lighthouse Baptist Church. I want them to see, look what God is, say, what, look what God is doing. Wow. God has blessed them greatly. They were meeting in a nursing home in a hot room. It's 24.8 degrees, a hot room. Hey, by the way, it got up to 30 last Sunday night, okay? But a hot room, and man, but just a few months ago, they were meeting there. But now look at what God's doing. They're packing it out. God has, God has blessed them greatly. You know, we ought not to do things for, 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 for self gain you know when you put the money in the offering plate that cost you something didn't it how many people could use the money that they tithe today you could it cost you something you gave you gave but god says we ought to give and give because he gets the glory and by the way if you're faithful you know malachi Wherein have you robbed me in tithes and offerings? Let me, let me turn there. Oh, you're preaching on tithing again, Pastor. Um, yeah, I am, but I'm also preaching on something else, another principle. Malachi chapter 2, isn't it? 
Oh, verse, uh, yeah, chapter 3, verse 8. It says, will, will a man rob, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, will a man rob God, yet he have robbed me? But ye say, wherein have ye robbed thee? And tithes and offering. Ye are cursed with a curse, and ye, uh, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Folks, listen to me. When we don't tithe, we are cursed, and we are robbing our country. Don't you think our country needs this church? How do you think we survive? By the money going in the plate. Verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That's a local church. That there may be meat in mine house, and they may prove and prove me now wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out, uh, out a blessing, that there shall not be enough room to receive it. A room enough to receive it. It's not just talking about tithing here. We can apply it to tithing, but we can also apply it to our service. Give to God. Say, Lord, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. I'm yours. God, whatever you want me to do. You want me to do what? Okay. You want me to go where? Yes, sir. You want me to, and by the way, God will pour out the windows of heaven. I believe God's going to pour out the windows of heaven on your business. I believe within a year, this will be, within a full year, that you'll say, man, this has been the best year our, our business has ever had. Why? Because you're serving God. I believe that wholeheartedly. I'm praying, God, pour out the blessing. I'm praying, you know, that, man, I'm praying that you'll have, you, you have to expand to this area and have another plant here. And, and, and man, that God will you'll say, wow, we got business all over. It makes it more, all over southwestern Ontario. It makes it financially feasible for me to have a second place. Happy. Oh, that's just so, that's, that's out of this world. Yeah, it is, because God. Don't you dream big for God? Dr. Lee Robertson told me, he said, I said, when I, gave, when, I, when I asked him before he died, I said, is there, is there, I, every time I talked to him, I said, God, piece, God, a piece of advice for me? Hey, God, a piece of advice? We talked on, him on, a, on a monthly and sometimes on a weekly basis. God, a piece of advice for me? He said, one of the last things he ever gave me, a piece of advice, he said, dream big for God. Be a dreamer for God. You know, I'd like to think that Rob having to go for getting his B license. We have a bus, having a bus parked near his house. Church bus. Him going to pick up little kids like Festus to come to church. And, and adults like PK and Abana and Jim and Dom to come to church. And I'd like to see maybe, maybe even Freddie and, and, and having his B license and picking up people from St. George area and me picking up people from, uh, from, uh, uh, from Brantford and, and, and Waterford area and, and running buses. You see, that's, that's, that's pretty a big dream. But at least I'm dreaming. God's getting the best part of my dreams, Amen. Wouldn't that be great? Little, little uh, 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 Rob coming down the down uh, 50, uh, 53, Highway 53 and a little bus could go, Brother Rob, I just surrendered to preach. Rob, oh, well, that's good. No, I think Rob would be jumping for joy. Man, Rob would come running in, preacher, preacher, preacher. Hey, little Johnny surrendered to preach. We have to give God our best. God has a talent for you. Listen to God and give Him your talents. We ought to quit listening to the wrong people. You know, not every Christian we should listen to. I, there's, there's a lot of Christians that are older than me that I don't listen to. I had one call me a nitwit last night. You think I'm going to listen to him? Nah. 
See, the poor widow, we talked about that. I think I talked with Rob about that last week, about the poor widow. She gave all she had. In, in, in Matthew, or sorry, Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to, 40 to, 41 to 44, it says, Jesus sat over against the treasury and behold how people cast, and, sorry, and beheld how people cast their, their money into the treasury. In other words, they gave their offering and many that were rich uh, cast in much. But, uh, sorry, and there came a certain poor widow and she drew through in two mites which makes a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and he saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, this poor widow has cast more in than all they that cast into the usury, into the treasury. In other words, she gave more than all, even all the rich people combined. For all they did cast, for all, uh, for all they did cast in their abundance, but she gave her want did cast in for all that she had, even all her living. See, her best was much less financially than others. But Jesus gave, said she gave more than every, anybody else because she gave her best. No matter how little, listen to me, folks, no matter how little you think your best is, God says, it's all right by me. You know, if we had a multimillionaire come in and gave a, a, ch a check for $100,000. Amen. The little kid puts in their whole allowance of a couple bucks. God says, that little boy, that little girl who gave in all is more than the $100,000. Little as much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown you can win it. If you go in Jesus' name. Number two, anything less than our best is not good enough, no matter how great it is. Anything less than, than our best, no matter how big it is, is not good enough. Uh, uh, no matter uh, how, no, not good enough. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 and 25 says, And then he that which saith uh, had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping uh, where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast is thine. See, he didn't see that God is fair. He's a fair God. Oh, God's a mean God. You know what, God? People, here's, here's, people's, here's people, the world's portrayal of God. Big over in heaven saying, you can't have fun. Don't smile. Don't you dare. I'll smite you. That's their attitude. But God is what? It's in the Bible. God is love. God's love. God cares for you. You know, when your kid, when my kids do well in school, I can't, hey, all right, good job. Maybe this man felt slighted. I don't know. Just like Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. They lied to the Holy Ghost. And in front of the whole church, God killed them. <laughs> Dead. These were wealthy landowners and probably gave more than even the, the small people, but they held back. They gave less than their best. God is not asking for 100% of your money. He's asking for your best. God's not asking. God, God just wants the best out of you. He's not asking for the impossible. He's asking for the best. Amen? You know, I was on vacation last week, but I still was working. Sorry, Sarah. Man, I was studying. I was praying. I was reading the Bible. I was wondering. I, I, I actually made Sunday tonight's message when I was on holidays. I wrote it out. You, say, you were supposed to. I gave God my best. I had fun when I gave God my best. 
See, when you give God your best, it seems like you have extra time. More time, you can get more done in the day. Anything less than the best in our lives, we ought to consider ourselves has failed. Number three. By the way, it don't matter what you are. It doesn't matter if you're an usher. You hand out the bulletins. It doesn't matter if you hand out a gospel tract. It doesn't matter what you do. You got to give God your best. Number three. Anything less than finishing our, with our best is not good enough. We have to finish with our best. The Bible says, I have fought a good fight. I've kept I, I, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. I remember when we were, um, by the way, and it doesn't matter how small we are. You kids, you young kids, finish with your best. I remember a couple winter, winter Olympics ago, um, they were doing the mogul ski, the crossboarding mogul skiing. And this American, she was probably from me to PK away, locked up, probably, you know, 50 meters left, last jump, and she looks back and she goes, yeah, woo, and what does she do? Poof. Falls flat on her face and finished out of the medals. She lost. She didn't finish for the best. If she just, 50 meters, all she had to do is just jump down, go across, and then go, and land, and, and then 50 meters away, go, yeah, I'm number one. She would have won a gold medal. I laughed. To this day, when I think of it, I still laugh. You would have too. Amen. You think that's funny? I, I, yeah, yeah, number one. Down. We have to finish with our best. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. The Bible says five times little children, little children. Little children. Talks about little children being special and important to God. Again, Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth do, do with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. When you're dead, you're, you're dead. You can't. There ain't no more work to be done. You're dead. Now, your legacy might live on, but you're dead. You're dead. Can't do any more. Are you going to hear, well, faithful unto death? Can we put that on your tombstone? Or are you going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or are you going to hear, eh? Am I going to say at your funeral, they were saved? That's it. Came to church every once in a while. Put a few bucks in the plate. Or am I going to be at your funeral saying, you know what? They, they were sold out for God. They gave all that they had. They worked hard. They loved the Lord. They worked. They worked. They worked. They, they were faithful up to the day they died. <coughs> Their legacy will live on forever. Number four. I'm almost done. I got four more minutes. By the way, before I go to number four, twice it says redeeming the time because the days are evil. The word redeem means to get it back, to use it wisely. Well, you know, it's afternoon. You know what I'm going to do this afternoon? Here's how I'm going to redeem my time. Sorry, but you know how tomorrow I'm going to redeem my time? I got to work. I'm going to work hard. Tonight, we could, we could stand around and sing kumbaya, or we could serve, serve the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to, uh, uh, now I'm looking forward to tonight's message. Mass will be good. Don't miss tonight. Don't miss tonight. Number four, anything less than finishing with our best is not good enough, no matter how sick you are. It was, number three was no matter how small you are, number four is how sick you are. And thick. <laughs> Still serve God. I'm reminded of Joanna Jackson. 
served God until she couldn't serve anymore. For the last while in her, she sat in her, in the in, in the couch, loving the Lord. Couldn't do much, but she was an encouragement to those around her. I remember the last time I spoke to her in her frail voice. I called the church. I said, hey, sister, how are you doing? She said, oh, Brother Cam, better than I deserve. I said, it's a, sounds like it's a very painful day today. She said, oh, more than you can imagine, but bless God, I have him. She said some things that were kind of, that I probably won't tell anybody. But you know what? She, even up into her last moments, Last time I spoke to her, she gave God her best. She encouraged this preacher. That's why I don't mind handing out her gospel tract. She lived faithful unto death. If you were dying a horrible, sick, painful death, would you still serve God or would you? Oh, I can. Some of these residents here, man, they still serve God. One of the residents was all upset because somebody took his tithe to our church. They took his tithe to our church. And he was upset. He's like, man, I was mad. I said, well, brother, that's okay. Don't get bitter, get better. He says, you're right. He says, I wish I could do more for the Lord. He said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm frail, I'm old. I said, you're doing, you're doing what you can for God. Will you, when you end your life, will you hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or will you hear, ah, come on in. I don't know about you, but I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. PK, you want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Abana, how about you? Sarah? Abby? Rob? Anna? Then let's do something. This world is dying and going to hell. We ought to go do something. What are you doing? Are you giving God your best?